Hello third graders, welcome back to math. Today we're going to work on lesson 9-4. It's called Exploring Elapsed Time, Squares, and Bridges. This lesson we're going to work on today and tomorrow because there's three different activities for you to do that might take up a little bit of time. But first, some mental math and fluency. I need you to go get your clock out of your toolkit. Pause the video while you get that, and when you come back, turn it on. Okay, I want you to show one o'clock on your clock. One o'clock. Now, remember your clock that you're using has two hands. That's what we call the things that go around the clock on the number side. They're called hands. You have an hour hand and you have a minute hand. The hour hand is short, the minute hand is long, and I want you to show one o'clock. Do you have it? So one o'clock, the hour hand or the short hand should be pointing past the one or to towards the one, and the minute hand should be pointing up at the 12. That's one o'clock. What time is 15 minutes later? How do you show that on your clock? 15 minutes later. So the minute hand, the long hand, should be pointing towards the three. And not it's not really pointing at the three. I mean, it is, but we want to think about the little tick lines that are there. Each tick line is one. Each tick line represents one minute. So if I want 15 minutes later than one o'clock, you're going to point your minute hand to the 15th tick mark, which is also in the same direction as the three. And what time is that if it's 15 minutes later? It is 115. So it should look something like this. Now, here's the hour hand, the orange one. And you can tell that it's not pointing directly at the one anymore. It's just a little bit past the one. Every time the minute hand moves one minute, that hour hand moves a little bit also. Now, I want you to show me what time it will be if it's one o'clock, so I'm gonna make my clock here be one o'clock. What time is it if it's 15 minutes earlier than one o'clock? Try that on your clock. Pause the video. Show me what it looks like if it's 15 minutes earlier. Okay, earlier means before one o'clock, so I can count back my tick marks, and I said, what time would it be if it's 15 minutes earlier? So I can count back 15 tick marks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Remember, each tick mark is a minute. So 15 minutes earlier than one is 12.45. And this is what it should look like on your clock. So now we're going to talk about what's 30 minutes later than 1 o'clock. All right, here's 1 o'clock again. What's 30 minutes later? So 30 minutes later would be 30 minutes after 1. And remember, each tick mark is a minute, but between each hour number, there are five tick marks. So I can just count these by five. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So 30 minutes after 1 o'clock is 1, 30. What would the time be if it is 25 or 30 minutes before 1 o'clock? Well, I can count backwards by fives until I get to 30. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, whoops, 25, sorry about that, 30. So it would be 12, 30. Okay. Now it's time for our math message, and you should have had this in your folder. So this is something that we are going to work on, or you're going to work on for a little bit for your math message. Jamar wants to know what time field day activities will end. 
He looks at the schedule that's on the right hand side to find out how long each activity lasts. Then he draws an open number line like the one that you see on the bottom to help. He did not finish his open number line. I want you to finish and help Jamar with that number line to see if you can determine what time everything will end on his field day. Put my video on pause while you work that out. Okay, so what do we know? The activities are relay races, long jump, hula hoop, double dutch, and there's two water breaks. We also know that it begins at 9.15. Our chart also tells us how long each of the events will last. So using that information can help you determine what time it's going to end. So, for example, we started at 9.15 and we've got the relay races. The relay races are 20 minutes. So that brought me to 9.35. Or then maybe I want to put a water break in there. And that's 5 minutes, so that took me to 9.40. Now this is how I solved it. You may not have put your events in this order. I did them in order of the uh, the schedule and I put a water break in where I felt it would be necessary. So the next event would be the long jump. That's 10 minutes. So I put plus 10 and I added that to my 940 and I've got 950. Then I'm going to do the hula hoops. The hula hoops are 15 minutes long. So I make a hump and I do plus 15 because that's how long that event is. And I can use my clock and you can use your clock too. So if I start at 9.50 and I add 15 minutes, I'm going to get to 10.05. Okay, well that looks like it could be a really good time for a water break after doing two events. And I know my water break is five minutes. So 10.05 plus five minutes is gonna be 10.10. I'm going to do my last event, which is jumping the double dutch. That's 20 minutes. So I'm going to add 20 minutes at the top here. So 10, 10 plus 20 minutes is 10, 30. So that means the end of field day would be 10, 30 a.m. So here's one of your activities for lesson 9, 4. You get to plan a field trip. You're going to need your math journal, page 283. It looks like this. Okay. You can have your toolkit if you need it. Totally up to you. And what you're going to do. Here is the schedule for the city zoo. That's where you're going on your field trip. Sounds fun. The children are going to arrive at 9.30 a.m. And they have to leave by 2 p.m. So you're going to plan a field trip for the third grade class. You're going to show the times at which each activity will begin and end on page 283. So here's where you can write your start time. Here's where you can write your end time. The plan must include, so this is what you have to do on your field trip. You either have to go to you have to go to the predator or prey show okay you have to go to the rainfor an rainforest animal show you have to see the endangered reptiles exhibit you have to pick one or two other activities that's up to you and you have to include a 30 minute lunch break you see that there are certain times here for starting these events you have the length of how long some of those activities are. You get to pick and choose when you do these activities. You're going to pick them so that they fit into your time frame of 9.30 to 2 p.m. Also doing the ones that you have to do and choosing one or two other ones and making sure that you have a lunch break in there. And you're going to put all that information here. That sounds like a lot of fun. Another activity that you're going to work on with this lesson is called taking apart and putting together squares. 
you're going to need two squares that I will give you. They look like this. Okay. You're going to need some scissors, tape or glue, and some paper to do some taping or gluing onto. So you can work with a partner, somebody at home, read through all the directions below and make a plan before cutting. So don't cut out right away, make a plan. Here are the directions. Cut out the squares from two squares on page 312, which is the page that's in your folder. Cut the squares into same size and same shape pieces along the dashed or the dotted lines. You do not have to cut on all of the dashed lines. Try to arrange all the pieces to make one large square without any gaps or overlaps, no spaces in between your pieces. If you cut pieces that cannot form a square, Try cutting your pieces again or cut two new squares in a different way. And then you need to glue or tape your finished square onto a piece of paper and you can take a picture and send it to me. So this is something that's going to take a little bit of time. Okay. Don't start gluing or taping down right away. You might need to rearrange your pieces. All right. And then let's see another activity that you're going to work on is called building bridges. You will need math journal page 282. It looks like this. Okay. You're going to need some paper, two books that are about the same size, scissors. Hmm. I don't have a pan balance to send home with you. Mm, I'm thinking you might find one in the mail in the in the milk crate. I think I might have an extra. So sometimes I talk to myself. Sorry. Um, some pieces of mass and objects from it says from your teacher, but you can find things at home. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to work in a small group to test which bridge holds the most mass without falling. So you're gonna, the piece of paper that you, you get, just a regular piece of paper, could be computer paper, loose leaf paper, fold the paper into fourths as shown here. Cut along the fourths. So you're gonna cut along where you're folded. Make a bridge between the two books with one of the rectangle pieces. This is bridge one. Check to see if this bridge will hold any of the light objects without falling in between the books. Measure the total mass of the objects it can hold and record their mass on page 282. And then you're going to make bridge two by taking a different rectangle. And you're going to fold it into eight or nine equal fan pieces like this. Fold it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Measure and record the total mass of the objects that that one can hold. Then you're going to make bridge three by folding a rectangle into 12 or 14 equal size folds. So bridge two is going to have eight or nine. Bridge three is going to have 12 to 14. So basically you're going to see and think about what bridges can hold different masses and why they can hold those different masses. So in your, in the tote, the milk crate, there should have been a pan balance and some mass pieces. If you forgot to pick them up, you can come back and get them. Okay, so this is why the lesson for Monday and Tuesday is going to be for two days. Don't do all of these lessons that I explained on the first day. Okay, do one or two on Monday and do the other one or two on Tuesday. Spread it out. And then you'll have your math boxes to work on after you have all those activities completed. These first two days will be a lot of fun exploring all those different activities. Good luck with everything.